Welcome back to my beginning Flutter series with the Flutterfly, me, Danielle. It's been a while, but I'm back now, and today we're going to talk about buttons. In particular, we're going to talk about the buttons we have with Material, which are the Raise button, the Flat button, and the Floating Action button, plus some special cases with icons. I hope you will uh, get a lot out of this, and let's get going. When I think of a button on an app, I typically think of a raised button. I think that's what Material would have us use in most cases. And you can see if I save it here, that's the minimum size of a button. But you know, it's not really useful when it doesn't have a child. And we're going to use a text child here, but it can be any widget you want. Uh, there are special cases with icons and stuff like that that I will show you in a little bit. But for now, we'll just make one that says, press me. That'll work. But if you look at that, that's not exactly what we'd want. So let's add an on pressed. And what ends up happening is Flutter makes it to where a button without an on pressed method is disabled. And so that's what a disabled button looks like. And this is an enabled button. And you can tell the difference. Um, it looks more friendly to press. but And without even realizing why, you can see that it's a lighter button here. You have it's actually elevated. So that, that's what happens there. But there are times where you might want it to be disabled. Maybe you have a form that hasn't been filled out all the way yet. And how would you do that? Well, in this case, I want to do it real simple. I'm going to make a Boolean that says, um, let's say press first. OK, we're going to say that is true for now. OK. And down here, I'm going to go ahead and have it say um, press first. And in that case, we're going to have it be an empty function. OK. And otherwise, it's going to be null. So if I save that, what we'll see is we'll see that it actually, if I say it doesn't do anything different right here. But let's go ahead and change this and have it. So, so now we're going to have our function here say, do a uh, set state. And that's how we change state here. And then I have to have it have its own uh, function here. And that function is going to say, press first equals not press first okay and uh, put a semicolon in there for that and put a semicolon here and we should be good and what ends up happening here is when I press it it becomes disabled well it's not super useful but it lets you see how we can rebuild something with set state and when it's rebuilt now all of a sudden we know whether or not the button is pressed or not so let's go ahead and duplicate that just to kind of make it a little more interesting and here I'm going to make this be not press first. And when I save that, we're going to see two buttons. And remember, it saved state here. So we'd already pressed it once, so press first was now false. But now you can see if I press the buttons, it just goes back and forth. OK, this is a silly example. I get that. But what I'm trying to show you is I'm trying to show you that when you're building your raised button, you can determine at that point in time whether or not it's enabled or not. Let's start customizing this button. You know, make it our own. Let's change the color. And we have colors to find for lots of things, so let's just pick blue. And when we do that, you'll see that it changes it to blue. All right, well, let's change the text color. Maybe make that white. And once again, you'll see how it makes that change. All right, um, another thing we have is maybe the padding around the, the child widget. Well, let's go ahead and make it have an extra 50. Let's just make it huge. We can see what that does there. And it just makes a nice big button for what we might want. Let's go ahead and put it back to something reasonable, maybe 10. Well, what we see with 10 and stuff like that is the fact that it's not really growing the width because um, we're already at the minimum width here. All right. Elevation is another one we could change. Now, I'd start being a little careful when we start messing with some of these things that we have, but it's there. Let's make the elevation 10. You know, that, that can make it pretty. See how it just visibly raised it off the thing here? I'll go back and forth just so you can see it real quick. We'll make it uh, the default 4 and just shrinks it down a little bit. But if we really want to stand off the page, we can do that. And there it brings it right up. Okay. 
And that last thing we might want to do is we might want to maybe round the edges. So why don't we do that? And we would do that with, uh, let's say, a rounded rectangle border. All right. And in that, we're going to have a border radius, which is going to be, let's say, circular. And 30 is probably a good number for that. And we do that, you'll see that it just rounds that off. And wow, it's starting to look a little nicer, isn't it? Let's take a look at what happens when we press the button. If I press and hold it like that, it has this from wherever I pressed it. It grows outward like that. Well, or if I just press it, it also can change the elevation a little bit. There's things like that that it does. Now, of course, Flutter lets us customize all of that. So this color that's kind of growing out like that is the splash color. Now, I'm going to show you some really garish color combinations. And I would not want you to use these in the real thing, but I'm doing this kind of stuff so that you can see what's actually happening and it makes it obvious. So I've just made that a deep orange. Now, if I go press the button, it, it'll fill it quickly. Or if I just hold it down, you can see it goes in like that. And it starts with wherever I am, and it goes on. Well, that's the splash. That's what the ink is doing there. We also can just define what we want it to look like when it's pressed, when it's actually being pressed. And that's the highlight. One of the interesting things about that is the fact that then it makes the, it doesn't have that, that little flow in of the ink. What it has is it, is it has, it can show you where the ink was pressed but then it very quickly becomes the color that we had. Now with highlight color, we also have the elevation, so I can change that. And once again, I'm, I'm making these very exaggerated so you can see that. So if I go press this button, you'll see that it lifts off the, lifts off the screen quite a bit with that. And you can go either direction with that, of course, but the typical thing with a button is it comes out when it's being hit. All right, so we have splash color, we have highlight color and elevation. We also have, we can change the disabled color with color, uh, disabled color, disabled elevation, and disabled text color. So we can actually make this button look however we want it to, also when it's disabled. We don't, we aren't stuck with that gray that we saw earlier. And a couple of things that work well with web are focus color and elevation, and my favorite, hover color and elevation. And that kind of stuff is used so that you can make it when you just hover over it. it, it becomes obvious you're hovering over it. it. You know, you know what's going to happen with it. The next kind of button we're going to look at is very similar. It's called a flat button. And as you can guess from the name, pretty much the only thing that's going to be different about it is that it is not raised. There's a caveat with that because that makes it to where it's very easy to confuse this with a just set of text or things like that. How, are, how is your user going to know to press the button? So we have to be careful with that. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to say I'm a flat button. Okay, and when we create that, you'll see it really, it's a button. We can press it. But how is the user supposed to know that? Okay, well, we can make it a little better maybe with a color. And we can call that, I need to put a comma here. And we can, you know, we'll make it a yellow button. Okay, when I do that, you'll see now, okay, well now maybe it looks more like a button. But if I've got other things laid out, you know, it's not obvious. Why would I want to use a flat button versus this really nice looking raised button? Sometimes I'm already elevated. I'm on a card. Maybe it's a dialog box. In that case, I don't want to elevate again because that just starts looking confusing to the user. So I would use that. If I want to make a choice that's not the obvious choice, I would really want to make the one prominent and one not so much. Maybe subscribe or leave. Maybe subscribe is a nice big raise button and leave is a lot more, not as obvious of a choice. But it still, by context, needs to be made. So they say put it in one of the bottom corners uh, for flat buttons or you know, sometimes it'll be up on the uh, a toolbar or something like that. Cases where you don't want it elevated. It also has access to all the same colors we had. We had disabled, we have the splash, we have the uh, highlight. So we have all these same colors. We don't, just don't have elevation. That's the big difference we have here. Material gives us one more button type, and that's the floating action button. That belongs up in the scaffold. So you can see I'm putting up here by app bar between that and body. It can go anywhere, of course, in the scaffold. And it's typically a floating action button. 
and so we have to give that a on press function so that it won't you know so it'll be enabled we've seen that with the other buttons um, and in this case we need to give it also an icon or a child I mean which is typically an icon and we, we're going to just grab from you know this is a typical one we would have and so when we do that you'll see down here we have a, a button now what if I don't want it in the bottom right well we have other options we can do there so for example um, I can add the floating action button location and that of course takes a constant from the floating action button location and we can put that at start top and when I do that you'll see it moves up here uh oh the colors make it where that's not really good so I can also go back up here to my floating action button and if you take a look color is not there but background color is so I can make that and once again I'm picking colors that are uh, obvious not ones that go well together so please keep that in mind and you see now I have the floating action button up there now why do I want a floating action button well typically there is one action that you're going to want to take let's talk about on an ordering app maybe you want to place an order well you would want an icon to do that I know when I look at Gmail it has a floating action button to, to create a new email so that's the common thing for that and that's how you would use it now let's talk about some other constructors that we have available to make buttons simpler okay we'll stick with the floating action button for a moment you'll see I've cleaned up the code kinda of put this back to just the plus sign down in the bottom very defaultish behavior but what if I didn't want a plus sign what if I wanted to say hello world well I could create a text widget have it say hello world that should work right it's a widget well okay if you take a look it it worked ish but it obviously it's no good because the button is a circle no matter what and so trying to fit hello world and that didn't really work well flutter gives us several name constructors as different as different ways to create some of these uh, buttons and so this one's got an expanded one or extended one and what this will do is it's going to make it be that oval kind of button but it doesn't take a child it takes a label which is still a widget and you'll see when I do that it makes it to where it works there if we wanted to have an icon with it I don't need to create a row I could actually just go ahead and add the icon here and that's gonna be an icon uh, icons dot I don't know face would be fine and then we could have that in there and it would say hello world and it's got the icon for the face there I would be careful making this too big like that because the idea of the floating action button is it's simple and we know exactly what we're doing with it but if you need to have it it is there so we've got that similar to the floating action button extended we have raised button dot icon and if we uh, go ahead and make it to where it'll format correctly you see me doing this I'm just right clicking and then reformatting with dark format to get it laid out like this we'll give ourselves a simple null on press we have an icon and this could be icon or icon with icon dot and that's really just a widget it just fills the icon slot oh, we will say receipt why not I haven't used that one we'll see what it looks like and then we can come down here and on the label it can be text I mean once again it can be anything we need it's just a widget and it's just two slots on the button and we'll just say see receipt and when we save that you'll see that it puts the button in there just like that and it doesn't have to be a raised button it could actually be a flat button is exactly the same you know as the context calls for you'll see that so we've got the ability to to do either one of these and so th these are three named constructors we have for the buttons it's floating but action button dot extended and then it's raised button dot icon and flat button dot icon but all of these take an icon and a label and both of those are just widgets so we can do it however we want and that lets us have a lot of flexibility and it's an easy way to create a button that has both an icon and a label let's go through a couple of more specialized widgets that we have uh, these work really well in the app bar so for example we can have in the app bar we can have actions 
which takes a list of widgets and these widgets are typically icon buttons so that they're nice and small and we can see them and we do that we will see that we have let me go ahead and get this up I'm just right clicking and reformatting with dart format that way it just looks a little nicer on the screen it's not going too wide which is especially good here and we'll see that we have an icon and an on press so we know what the on, the on press can be any function we need it to be just so that the buttons activated and the icon is an icon typically we'll grab that from our icon library and uh, we could do refresh so when I do that you will see it puts up here in action okay and another one that we could have is uh, we have the option to have a um, besides the actions we could also have a leading and a common thing for that would be a back button and we just have a back button defined and you'll see that that's up here and that would actually pop it if we navigate it which we'll talk about next time hey Dorian let's do our outro okay I hope you enjoy our episode on buttons and learned a lot if you did please consider subscribing I would love to have you it would mean a lot to me Next time we're going to talk about navigation. Now that we have buttons to make us move stuff, we'll talk about navigation and talk about how we can move around different pages in our applications. I hope you'll join me for that. Until then, go write some Flutter. <laughs>